Welcome back to a new year of learning and fun and suffering and sleepless nights. Maybe last year didn't go according to plan. You fell behind, didn't get the grades, had a bad diet, crap sleep schedule, but we're not gonna make the same mistakes this year. It's time to make the biggest academic comeback of your life. Let's go. You're gonna implement the right habits from the get-go. You're gonna study efficient, study smart, so your entire life isn't taken up by school, and you're gonna become him or her. Or well, you know who I mean, that student. If you're looking for some tips to really level up your school game, this is the right video. Let's start with your transformation. Tip one, reflect on how you screwed up and set the right intentions from the start. That aren't just foofy floofy, oh, I'll get better grades, I'll do better next time, no. Number one, think of the one thing that you are doing or were doing that you know is screwing up your life. And then properly analyze the ways you can cut that thing out and take actionable steps against it. Whether that means turning off all your notifications or installing apps and extensions to block all your YouTube and Insta feeds so you can go better on time. Your environment and habits matter much more than all of this temporary motivation you have right now. And then two, think about one or two things that you really want to prioritize this year or even this semester. I think of mine as two milestones that I want to accomplish. First is stay on top of med school to be on track for an honors or distinction. And second is the 100x the views on this channel in a year's time. And yeah, extremely steep milestones, but it allows me to deconstruct these big goals into what I do per month, per week, even per day. If I have a class that day, it means to stay on top of the new information. I know I need to go through the lectures, understand that, and make the questions in that same day rather than delaying it for the next week. And it also means every week on YouTube, I have to post good, valuable, constantly improving videos. That's it. You see, even if I don't accomplish everything to do with those milestones or always cut those bad habits out, it's about having confidence and mindset where you have to realize that everything that you're doing is in your control. So consciously think about the milestones and then work backwards. We'll recalibrate what's up here. Tip Tip two is to add all your classes, your quizzes, your exams to your calendar. Open up Google Calendar and link in your school's online system to it and start using a calendar to plan your life and your everyday actions. It's very simple actually. Every morning all you do is you just look at the free gaps in your calendar and then put the relevant tasks in them. Tip three, you need to learn to study less. You're going to be like, what? Surely I need to do more to get better grades, but no. The reason I get good grades is because I study less. You might look at people like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk that claim to work 100, 120 hours a week. That's 17.2 hours per day, seven days a week. But if you think about it, the type of work that these people do is actually very different from what our students do. Those 17 hours for them includes emails, travels, meetings, conversations with their team. Whereas for our students, we're just studying, forced effortful learning, understanding hard concepts, writing research papers, and all of our work hours involve doing this mentally taxing stuff. The times where I'm forced to work 12 plus hours a day because of exam pressures, I just know that a lot less is going in, I'm less focused, I'm more lost, I get frustrated and annoyed quickly as well. So what I realized, and hear me out, is that I work a lot more, get much more done if I firstly actually use the classes and lectures in a smart way, more than in the next bit, and if I limit myself to only three three hours of work after school. Only three. You're screwing yourself over if you give yourself the entire day to study and do schoolwork. So have activities, dinners, plans, sports, gym scheduled in the evenings after school so that you know that you only have from 3 to 6 p.m. or 5 to 7 p.m. If you give yourself less time to do the work, you'll get into focus faster, absorb more, and as a result, learn better. And even if you don't have anything to do, just set deadlines for when to finish the work by. Honestly, by limiting the hours I work, I happily study every day. Like I'm genuinely kind of excited to sit there, get in the flow state and learn more. Again, kind of nerdy, but tip four, active learning in class. This is probably the most common question I get. What do I do during classes or lectures? If I'm not taking notes, it feels like a waste of time. Now, the way you level up your grades is by using the classes to properly start the learning process. Instead of copying from the board like some puppet, use the classes to actually become active with the learning. Firstly, take little to no notes. Second, make sure you understand where this topic fits in your syllabus, like what big chapter is it linked to. Also, what are the main learning points being taught today? You can just read through them at the start of the first 10 minutes of the class where nothing is usually happening. Then third, whilst you're being taught, convert the information in the slides into questions. At the end of the class, you'll maybe have 10 to 15 questions from the lesson, and then you can use them to test yourself on the topic later. That is, by the way, my main form of revision. And lastly, actually use the class to understand. Be annoying, ask questions. If you feel bored, start thinking 
thinking about what you've learned so far and then recap it in your head. Or you can also, well, this is a bit weird, something that I do, but I do think it's better for effective understanding. I feel like most lecturers are quite slow, so I just start jumping to conclusions and predict what the teacher is going to say next. Like I start to think, okay, hmm, is what they're saying making sense? Are they teaching it in a good way? And this act of analyzing and evaluating how the content is being taught and then jumping to conclusions means that I am focused for the whole lesson because I want to know what the teacher is going to say next. I want to know if I'm right. Tip five, start experimenting and create a study system for yourself. My first step is to understand and create questions from the lecture slides and notes. Only questions, no answers. Step two, use these questions that you've made on this topic to test yourself on every big quiz or exam you have. Literally write down or think through the answers from memory, no resources. Step three, once you've really tried answering each of the questions after every few questions, go back to your resources, the textbooks, the YouTube, the slides, and try and understand what you missed out, fill in your knowledge gaps. Think about ways that you can learn this better now for the next time. And finally, step four, improve and refine the actual question list that you have as well. And also another tip is that you highlight them red, green, or orange, depending on how well you did on each question so that you know for next time and you can target the red questions more. And then just rinse and repeat this cycle. That is my main revision system. And after testing myself on a topic even like three times, I know the slides and notes inside out. To experiment with evidence-based studying and figure out your own system, focus on the active learning methods. Tip six, active recall method for STEM subjects. There's barely any information on evidence-based studying for these sorts of subjects, and that's because they're a bit different. See, the fundamental challenge for any of these questions isn't a memory test. It's to be able to look at the problem and identify the method or the procedure that you need to use to get to the solution. And maths and physics textbooks don't really give you this. They just give you the topic and then give you 20 of the same problems that can be solved using the same method. And so what I did for chemistry, I remember, is I still made a huge list of questions, but for every topic, I only listed out one to two questions maximum for each of the types of problems I encountered. So instead of practicing 10 free radical questions that all look the same, I just put one or two of them. And then I put one or two questions for each of the other reaction types. And then I end up with this list of different types of questions per chapter that I could then practice. So now you're looking at a different type of question each time that uses a different method like it is in your exam. The whole point is to try and make it hard for yourself to actually look at the problem and identify the method that you want to use. Because the more you develop on this skill, the more you learn to identify which method to do, use when, the better you'll become at solving any questions within your exams. Tip seven, learning difficult topics for maths, physics, chemistry, the chaotic way. It goes without saying that every time you get something wrong from those practice questions, you go back to the textbook and YouTube videos to understand the topic and the equations as much as possible. But what I've learned is when you need to teach yourself really difficult concepts from these subjects, you need to do it in a chaotic way. If you're dealing with a difficult topic and you have to understand the maths, for example, what I used to do and what a lot of my smart engineering friends do is that we grab a ton of paper, not just one page because you need space to learn these equations. So you use your slides and notes and then use them to work, start working with the equations start deriving them on the papers, use them with different problems, write down everything you can possibly about that topic on all of those pages. Try random practice problems, all the ideas, the trials and errors that you have, all the thoughts that you have to do with them and write everything down on those papers. The point is to write everything down and have as much clarity as you can. And then once all of your thought processes are on these mind maps of some sort, which by the way looks like gibberish, now you can start to pull back. Think deeply, make links between this equation and that derivation and the way this can be used to solve that problem. Bit of a weird method but I think that to truly learn difficult concepts that that is the sort of exploration that you have to do and it's not talked about much on YouTube. Tip 8. Now that you have your study systems on track you need to make smart choices in your daily life which means having a good routine in school and after school. If you have a gap between your classes, don't just come home or spend the two hours, three hours doing stuff aimlessly. Go to the library, switch off your phone and get ahead with homeworks, assignments, revise so that you have to do less when you get home. And when you do want to get home, I know you just want to chill and relax. But the smartest thing that you can do is to not waste time planning or going on your phone or eating. It's to straight away get into the work, even for an hour, even 45 minutes, the finished easiest possible thing that you have to do today. And then you can take a bit of a break. Because if you come home, chill around, do stuff, go on your phone, then you won't start the actual work for hours. And the longer you relax before at least doing some work, the harder it'll get to start properly. But if you do the work, do something straight away when you get home for conditioning your brain for focused activity. Tip nine, studying as a night owl. Okay, so your sleep schedule is messed up. How do you fix it? Well, 
My actual tip is that you don't work too hard to fix it. Don't get me wrong, you still need to wake up on time for your classes, you need to get enough sleep, but there's no real correlation between success or productivity and waking up when the sun rises. Being a night owl myself, I cognitively function better at night. I've tried a billion times to fix my sleep schedule. But it's useless because each of us have our own unique internal body clocks, which means forcing yourself to wake up at that perfect 4 a.m., 5 a.m. time is useless. It's just dumb. So this is what I do to maximize my time, even if I am waking up at 8 or 9 a.m. Firstly, even though your energy levels are low to moderate in the morning times, you still need to have a fixed wake up time and a quick morning routine. The benefits of it are self-explanatory. Second, in the daytime, I focus on doing low energy tasks, more observational things that can be done without effort. I'd still be going to classes, doing all the work, being active, but it's not heavy. It's just a lot easier this way because you're not unnecessarily tiring your brain. And then in the evening, when I do have the tendency to concentrate better and I can focus and work a lot faster, that's when I do the work full on. I tackle the difficult slides of the week, do the actual learning, the practice questions, and I focus on effortful revision. See, if I do things like this, I'm working with my energy levels rather than against them. We need to remove this narrative that you're lazy and you won't get much done if you don't wake up on the crack of dawn. Tip number 10, feeling stupid is a good thing. At the start of any class or course, we usually feel quite stupid, like we don't know anything. But embrace the stupidity and think of yourself as a curious beginner that's just there to learn. Well, you are there to learn, you're a student. But once you properly think about that, think of yourself as that curious beginner that's just there to learn. Your perspective on class completely changes. You stop saying stuff to act smart or to signal something to everyone else. You're not shy about asking questions. You genuinely want to sit forward, learn, and understand what's being taught. And you start to actually think about, okay, how can I use this class, the people here, to learn this topic best? And if you have this insecurity, if you ever feel like people around you know it more than you do and that you're like behind or something, that's completely false. No. You're not. People just say one or two things that sound like they know what they're doing, but they don't. It's usually fake and it's usually them signaling something without even realizing it probably. So feeling stupid is a good thing. It means you're ready to learn. At the end of the day, people's reasons for not pushing themselves enough to level up are usually, oh, my teacher sucked. The day is too long. I'm too tired. My phone is too distracting. But if you sit down and think about it, these are all excuses where you're blaming someone or something else and you're not taking accountability. The mindset should never be, oh, my teacher sucks. Hmm. It should be, okay, how can I now go on better websites, find better teachers on YouTube and find ways to learn better? It should be, yes, my phone is a distracting void that pulls me in every single second that I look at it. Okay, but let's turn off notifications, let's download apps, let's put extensions on my laptop to block socials out. It should always be proactive and logical. So stop waiting for the perfect moments to get your craft together and just do it. Just do it. We talked about leveling up your studying by creating a study system. And to actually start to create this method of studying smarter, check this video out. It's a beginner's three-step guide for how I would study smarter and not harder, where I really break down how I would do it as a beginner. Oh, and I've also made a step-by-step -step study guide for how to study maths, even if you have no mathematical talent. Check it out if you're interested. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you liked this video. Give it a like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Have a great year ahead, and I will see you in the next one.